So here we have the date and time set up. So you want to run through the wizard in order to make sure all your basic configurations are done. So you want to set it to your time zone. Then you want to set it to the format of your country. So we are the UK, so it's date, month, and year. The time and date you can either manually configure or if you're using the internet, it can automatically pick it up from a server so the time and date will always be correct. On the next step, you've got your network. It's easier to enable DHCP, so this will automatically assign your recorder to your network with all the correct parameters. You can then disable it at a later time in order to make the IP address static, so that means it doesn't change and you'll always know what that is. Okay, when doing your network parameters, sometimes you may get a DNS format error. Sometimes it can be good to configure the secondary DNS to be a public DNS, which is 8844. Here will be where your recorder's hard drive is. It should tell you the total capacity and the residual capacity. This will automatically overwrite when full and you can format it and initialize your hard drive here. In this case, we don't have a hard drive connected. Here you can see some cameras. Uh, these are automatically picked up by the recorder. So when you plug in your camera, it will automatically take up one of these IP addresses. Here you can connect your cameras or connect them once you finish the wizard. Here you can change the password and edit the credentials to your preference. Okay, so okay, here once you go into the live view, you'll see four sections that have no video. This is because this is a four port POE recorder. The four no videos are going to be related to the camera ports. So when you automatically plug in the camera, it should pick up the IP address. When you right click, it will bring up the full user interface. So you've got all your options and settings available to you. Uh, here you can make any changes and adjustments to the recorder to how you like. Okay, so we're going to add a, re a camera to the recorder and we're going to be using the plug and play feature as well as the manual feature. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug in a camera to the recorder. And that usually takes a couple of minutes for the recorder to pick up and it will automatically assign an IP address to the camera. So when you right click it will bring up all your options. Here we want to go to the channel where we can view our cameras that are connected and we're going to manually add a camera. So once you've got the camera connected and is bound it will then give you a live feed and display. To bring up the preview again, you can just right click or go to preview in the top main menu. To manually add a camera, you would need to do the process differently. So we would need to go to channel, select PoE, and then PoE bonding configuration. So the first channels from 1 to 4 are all automatically configured when you plug in the camera. But if you wish to manually add all your cameras using a different device such as a switch, you may want to disable this so that that way these camera these channels aren't automatically assigning the cameras. So now we're going to manually add a camera. We're going to hit the search button, and this will now begin to search your network for all the cameras it can find. Once you've got your list, you're just going to want to pick the cameras you wish to add and then add them. And as you see, because we've turned off the auto configuration, it's assigned it to channel 2 instead of to channel 5. So the next thing we're going to do once we've got our cameras added is we're going to turn on the motion detection. So once you've got your cameras, you want to open up the main menu by right clicking, go to system and then event. So under normal event you've got your motion detection option. You want to enable it. You're going to also want to use a left click and drag with the mouse to select the area you wish for your motion to be detected. 
you can also adjust the sensitivity with 0 being the weakest and 10 being the most sensitive. So we'll leave it in the middle. Once you've done that, you want to make sure you apply the settings. Once you've applied them, you then want to change channel and then do the next camera. So you want to set the area, check the sensitivity, enable it, and apply. Under arming schedule, you can set what days you want it to change. So for this, we'll set it 24 hours a day or week. Here under linkage action, you can configure it to enable a buzzer alarm on the recorder to send you an email notification and for the channel to record. You can also have an alarm output so when a motion is detected on the camera it can send out an external alarm to the recorder. So next we're going to set up the email notification. So here you want to go to the main menu, select system and then advance and here you can see the email. So you want it to enable it. You want to put your email address as server. You then want to use the port. Username should be your email address and the password should be the email's password. And the sender can be sent from the same email address you have here but you can also use a different email address if you wish. We have tested and used Gmail and we suggest that you use Gmail as your email SMTP's main address. However, you can use other addresses. The next step we want to do is set up the mobile application on your phone. To do this through the recorder, you can go to System, select Advance, and you left the option for P2P. Here you've got the QR code to find the app on the App Store, and then the number underneath the QR code here is for the recorder. You can see the status is online. This represents that the recorder is connected to the server and is getting access for the app to work. Uh, the rest of the configuration doesn't need to be changed. You simply go onto the Bitvision app and then go through the process of registering the recorder. Here you have the exposure settings, backlight, white balance, video adjustment, image enhancement and defog. You can enable the defog mode or switch it to auto so that should the camera get condensation or steam you, it will automatically help reduce this and you can adjust the strength only if you have it on manual but I would suggest leaving it on auto. Once you've done any configuration do ensure that you apply them when it's done. Once you've got your cameras connected for all the cameras connected directly into the recorder you can go onto the channel select PoE and here you can see the camera is connected and the voltage. Here you've got the options for short distance and long distance. So if you're running the cable more than 20 to 30 meters we would suggest you switch it to the long distance. Here we're going to look at the recording and storage. This can be found under the menu and then you can go storage and here you'll see the options for your recording and also for your storage. At the moment we don't have a hard drive connected, but when you do have one, it will tell you the total capacity and the residual capacity. You'll also have the options for constant record, which is the default setting. So when you get your recorder, it will be on 24 hours recording. You can edit and change this. All you need to do is left click and drag, and you can add and remove time as and where you need it. To do multiple days at once, you can select the tick boxes and adjust them accordingly. Should you want to be recording in motion, you simply go down, select the option for motion, and then drag it out on the box. And as you can see, you'll get a yellow bar and a green bar, each color representing a different type of recording. So when you have a normal record, it shall be green, and a motion shall be yellow. Make sure you apply any changes so that once you've done it, it's saved. When editing your schedule, do make sure that you're applying it to all the channels you desire to be configured on. 
So as you can see from the list, you can drag down to which channel you want to apply to. Next we're going to show you how to access the image settings of the camera. So when you're in the main menu and you select channel, here you can find the options for image. And here for every camera that is directly plugged into the recorder and working over PoE, you can see you've got quite a few different options for image adjustment where you can adjust the brightness and contrast in order to clear up the image to your preference. Here under working mode you have the option for auto, day, night and schedule. This is for the infrared. So during auto it will automatically switch between night mode based on how much light it is receiving. By manually switching to night mode and then applying it you can see that it will change it on the camera. You would usually want to leave it as auto for default so when the night comes it will automatically switch to infrared mode. You can adjust the gain so here it will tell you how much light it needs to activate the night vision mode on the camera. The higher it being the more light it will take in before switching. So today we're going to be covering how to register a bit vision and how to assign your recorder to your account. So what you want to do is register an account with Bit Vision. All you need to do is select the register option and then go through the following information in order to do so. We're going to be using an account we've already made. So once you've logged into the app, you will have your information at the top so you know that you're clearly logged in and then you want to begin registering your device. So you want to select device here you will have the option in the bottom left corner, add device and then use SN add. Here you would want to scan the QR code from the recorder. You can find this through the menu of the recorder or on the label underneath the recorder. Once you scan the QR code, you'll then get some options for naming the device. This we're going to just call it CCTV. And then you want to enter the username of the device, which is going to be admin, all lowercase, and the default password, which is 12345, unless this has been changed. The capture code can be then found underneath the recorder on the sticky label. And do keep in mind it is case sensitive. And then for selecting what device group you want to add it to, you want to select my devices and then save. Once that's been saved, you want to click done, and then the account will be bound to you. Once you do that, you can then select Once you have the account bound, you can go back to the preview, select your device, and then click done. Should you log back into the BitVision app and you're on your account, and you can check that by going onto the main menu and seeing that you're logged in, you can always go back to the preview and then select reconnect. And what that should do is reconnect the camera that wasn't there, and if you have multiple cameras, you can do reconnect all. which will then go on to displaying all the cameras that are on the recorder. Should you want to turn on the event messages for push notifications, you want to go into the main menu and select settings from the bottom left. Here you'll see the option for events or message notifications, depending if you're on Android or iOS. Here you can change the exposure settings, exposure settings. I saw this had exposure. <laughs> you have to say it again. You know? Yeah, I did, I did. I don't know if it caught it, but hey. Here you can change the exposure. I can't say exposure. Why am I saying weird? Alright.